Hey, what up, party people? I'm Conduit, and today I wanted to dive into the rich and intricate game of Ultimate General Civil War, a game that masterfully blends historical accuracy with deep strategic gameplay. Set during the tumultuous and bloody period of the American Civil War, this title offers more than just battles. I think it immerses players in the supply situation of the war and how winning or losing battles affects your reputation and ability to continue to wage the war. In this video, I'm going to explore why Ultimate General Civil War stands out as a remarkable yet often overlooked gem in the strategy game genre. From its detailed battle mechanics to its authentic portrayal of historical battlefields, I want to dissect the elements that makes this game not only engaging but also a pretty decent learning tool for history enthusiasts. So whether you're a seasoned veteran of strategy games or you're just kind of curious and clicked on this video because you thought it looked interesting. Why don't you join me as we delve into the captivating world of Ultimate General? And let's find out why this game deserves more spotlight in the strategy gaming community. So this game takes place during the American Civil War, you know, who would have figured, and covers almost all of the major battles of the war, and even an alt-history battle where the Confederates attacked DC to win the war. Now, you do not play as historical army or leader, as you fight battles on every front of the war except for the Western Theater, so, you know, you're not playing as General Lee or Grant, but you actually get to create your own general and choose your own backstory, which allows you to role play, and actually, you can play as yourself as you want, which I think is kind of sorely lacking in other strategy games. There usually aren't options to actually decide your backstory and what profession you were doing before the war started, at least in an actual official or gameplay manner. In other strategy games, you usually play as like the so-called spirit of the nation, like the Europa Universalis series, or Hearts of Iron 4, or even um, games like Command and Conquer, you don't really play as an actual person, or if you do, you're sort of a, just a nameless protagonist. This game has you play as a West Point graduate who served in the Mexican-American War, who then chose to either stay in the army or start a business or go into politics. All of your background choices affect your starting stats, which I think is pretty interesting and cool. And the stats you have are politics, which affects the rewards you get after battles. So I recommend dumping all of your skill points into that as soon as possible, as soon as you get them. The next skill is economy, which makes purchasing equipment for your soldiers cheaper the more you level it up. The next skill is medicine, which depending on your skill level gives you a percentage of your casualties back after every battle. The next skill is training, and in this game the training skill doesn't do what it does in every other game. It just allows you to purchase veteran troops cheaper since when you replenish your army you can get free recruits from your manpower pool, or you can pay money and purchase veteran troops who don't bring down the total experience pool of the unit. I'll go more into depth about that later. The next skill is organization, which allows you to fill a bigger army and have more troops in a unit at a time. But it is a double-edged sword in this game because when you level up, the enemy armies also get bigger and get more troops. The next skill is logistics, which determines the amount of ammo your troops start with. Although your troops can keep firing if they run out of ammo, it's at a much slower firing rate. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this feature. I understand it's just a game, but in the real Civil War, ammo on both sides was such a huge deal. I mean, if you just look at the Battle of Gettysburg and the fighting at Little Round Top, when the Union troops were exhausted and out of ammo and had to hold the line, the only thing they could do was charge at the enemy, and they pushed them off. That can't happen in this game because your troops never run out of ammo. I think it allows you to not prepare as much as you should with your supplies and it kind of makes it so you don't have to make hard tactical decisions that real generals have to make. The last skill is reconnaissance which allows you to see before the battle starts how many troops your enemy has and as the battle goes on you can see how many men the enemy has lost and has left. I think this game has a pretty cool and unique way to tie the gameplay into a bigger story slash campaign. After the first prologue battle, you're going to be dropped into the campaign screen where you don't just speed through all the major battles of the war. There are about 48 smaller engagements that you can choose to fight in, which if you win, allows you to get more money, rewards, and reputation points. And every minor engagement you win, it gives debuffs to the enemy army in the next major engagement. 
but it is a double-edged sword because if you lose those battles, you lose men, you lose reputation points, and in this game, if you lose enough battles, you'll be forced to resign or just restart the campaign because you don't have enough supplies, men, and money to actually start winning the major battles because you lost so many, wasting them on these tiny little skirmishes. While you're also looking at the campaign screen, this is also where you can manage your army, which I think is actually pretty in-depth and pretty cool. Depending on your organizational skills, you can field more men per unit and have more division and cores. When you want a new unit, you're going to click on the plus button, and then you're going to decide what type of unit it's going to be. There is infantry, cavalry, artillery, and skirmishers. They all serve a unique purpose, but unless you're playing on the hardest difficulty, infantry and artillery are going to make up the bulk of your army. After choosing what type of unit to make, you're going to choose what weapons to arm them with. The better weapons cost more money, and there may not even be enough weapons in storage for you to buy, especially as the campaign drags on and you start to lose more and more. All of the weapons are real-world weapons, which I think just helps with immersion and kind of setting the tone. And then for units like cavalry, you can decide whether you want them to be equipped with just a carbine and have poor melee capabilities, and they can be more like dragoons, which are essentially mobile infantry. Or you can equip them with pistols slash shotguns and swords and have them excel at running around the map and destroying lone units or artillery behind lines, but they're not going to stand up too well to light infantry. I think actually getting to decide what the composition of your army is is really immersive and helps you with the role playing. I also think battle tactics in this game are very interesting because, well, it takes place during the Civil War. This war is considered by a lot of people to be the turning point in history where Napoleonic warfare kind of started to end and we started to get into more modern warfare. Instead of just lining up across from each other and shooting, which I understand there's more to it than that, but you know. It kind of started to fade and now it's about outmaneuvering your opponent, getting good high ground, flanking, using cover which have always been a thing in warfare, but they were a much smaller part of warfare before the 1860s. But with new destructive weapons being made, allowing faster firing rates for small arms and artillery alike, and the increased range and accuracy for weapons, it changed what battlefield tactics were viable. In wars before the Civil War, lines of infantry were much tighter together to compensate for the low accuracy of firearms, so it didn't make sense to be spread out because... Your guns could barely hit anything. In the Civil War, lines became much more spread out and flexible. Now, if your infantry was lined up in standard line formations like the Red Coats from the, from the Revolutionary War or the French Army of Napoleon, they would have been slaughtered with a much higher death rate. And another thing that changed with this war were the modes of communication were much quicker too. There was the telegraph and the railroad, allowing men and orders to move quickly. Now, not as much, you don't have to wait for a messenger on a horse to come and give you orders. Of course, that still did happen, but for the higher ranks, they could get word back to their governments quicker. You could send lines across the whole country. Almost everything was moving on a much faster scale. And this was also the war that had some of the first cases of trenches being used and dug in defenses on a whole new scale. And I think this game represents that pretty clearly. Like, if you have more men, line tactics will still work, but prepare to bleed for it, especially if you're evenly matched. And using cover, which I think this game simulates pretty well by giving a cover percentage based on what grounds your troops are. If they're deployed in a, forest, in a forested area, they're going to have 100% cover, which is going to give you a lot more advantage over their enemy in an open field, and vice versa. And it really does let you know and makes you feel like cover is making a difference. Supplies in this game are given by a wagon unit, which gives out ammo to all nearby units in its radius until it's gone. But if you have fast cavalry or make the whole enemy line route, you can capture their supply wagons and use the supplies for yourself, which I think is pretty cool. Not a lot of other strategy games really have supplies that matter a lot. This game also has a reputation mechanic, as I touched on earlier, where if you win battles, you get more reputation which you can then spend on more supplies like manpower, new guns, new officers, or you can choose to save them, and the higher the, your reputation is, the more moral your men start out with. I think it's actually a pretty cool abstraction of public opinion at the time, because that's kind of how armies worked more back then. The more popular you were with the civilians, the more support your government would give you, and your men would give you. 
I think this game also makes you use tactics which real Civil War generals had to use. And I think the game allows you to give orders pretty easily. It's a lot more intuitive than other um, Civil War games I've played. I'm looking at you, Grand Tactician Civil War. The controls are ass. So if you left click and drag over your units, you can then right click and drag a line. And it will have all the units that you selected line up across in that direction and the way you drew that line. So you can make a hard 90 degree angle and your troops are going to line up in a hard 90 degree angle across that line. And then you can also just click on a single unit and left click and, dr and draw a line to where you want it to go and how it should move. And it'll do that by itself unless it hits enemies. So you can set up traps, flanking maneuvers by having units go the long way around. And they'll continue to move until they reach the enemy. So I think this game pretty realistically simulates weapons and tactics of the Civil War. So it has a lot of depth and realism. I think the AI in this game, it's pretty decent. I'm not going to say that it's the best, but it's a lot better than the Total War AI. Because if your men encounter an enemy, they'll turn to face it and start fighting back instead of just getting like destroyed in their flank like your, like your men do in Total War. Where they'll just sit there waiting for orders. I also love in this game how all of the maps of the major engagements are pretty historically accurate. I mean, if you play the Gettysburg map, I think that's probably the most well-known battle of the Civil War. And there's a lot of maps you can just look up. But just look at that map compared to the in-game map. It's a pretty close one-to-one -one recreation. I think that this game could be a great introduction to somebody who doesn't have an interest in the Civil War, but wanted to get interested I've put about 700 hours into this game, and I think it's pretty endlessly replayable. There's a Union and Confederate campaign to play through. You can change the composition of your army for each playthrough. And then you can actually play historical battles with the actual men and division at those battles, if you think that you'd be a better general than they were back then. I also think the graphics are pretty good, especially to any other Civil War games I've played. You know, stuff doesn't look like it's 4K, but it's also not ugly. You know, there's not a lot of details, but there's enough, and the body of dead men will literally ground. Ugh, one of my favorite things in gaming. So, after praising this game so much, there are some criticisms I have. I think the biggest one is that victory isn't decided by casualties and who's kind of winning the tide of the battle, but capturing victory points or flags. I understand that it would be very hard to sort of program organic victory points which might pop up around the battle where the battle's getting real heated and whoever wins that engagement would probably win the battle if it was real. But I don't know, sometimes it's just frustrating where I've had battles where I've dominated the enemy but I lose on a technicality because I didn't capture the flag or the victory point. It can be frustrating. I also wish that the creators would have come up with a random scenario map mode or something, or if they could have released a map maker through the Steam Workshop, because if you play this game enough, the maps might get boring. You know, once you've seen all the maps, <laughs> you've seen all of them. That's all there is to play. And I mean, there's a lot, but I do wish that there was sort of like a random generator thing. And I also think the creator should have enabled a Steam Workshop and been more friendly to the modding community. I think this game has great modding potential. But just by virtue of them not having the Steam Workshop open, a lot of people are not going to look for mods for it. I honestly believe that this is one of the most underrated strategy games. I honestly think it's better than most Total War games or any Command & Conquer game, honestly. I think that this game should be held up by the strategy community of what a great strategy game can be. I don't think it gets enough praise. It doesn't get its roses. As we've explored, I think that this game stands as a testament to the richness and complexity of strategic gameplay blended with historical accuracy. It's not just a game. It's honestly a journey through one of the most pivotal periods in American history. Brought to life through immersive battles and thoughtful mechanics. Yeah, it does have its shortcomings, you know, the victory conditions can be frustrating at times. And the lack of a random scenario generator or a more robust modding support does limit replayability to an extent. But I don't want to forget the incredible strengths that makes this game shine. The detailed battle tactics, the authentic recreation of historical battlefields, and the way that it challenges us to think like generals of the Civil War era. As I reflect upon my 700 hours or so of gameplay... I really am just struck by the depth and re replayability of Ultimate General Civil War offers. I think it's more than just a game, it's a doorway into history. 
inviting us not to only witness but actively participate in the strategic challenge of the Civil War. I think, in conclusion, Ultimate General may not have the mainstream recognition of some other strategy giants, but I think it undoubtedly deserves a place of honor in the pantheon of great strategy games. I think it's a hidden gem that offers a unique and rewarding experience to those who delves into its depths. So that's all I had, you know, thanks for watching this video if you did watch all the way to the end. Um, they actually are working on a new American Revolution one, which I'm pretty excited about. I can't wait for that to come out. They also have um, Ultimate General uh, Age of Admiral. I don't think that's the right title, but I thought that game was just mediocre. I definitely think this is their strongest one. Um, if you played this before, I mean, let me know what you thought in the comments or if you're going to pick it up. I mean, I think it's great and I recommend it wholly. Um, that's all I have. Conduit out.